Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you how to use the Shard CN library in your own Next.js projects and also I'm going to let you know how it works because I truly believe that you should know each and every library and how it works in your Next.js project because you have nothing to lose when you learn something new. Let's initialize a new Next.js project using the script given in the official Shard CN documentation. Let's copy it. Paste it in our terminal. I'm going to call my app Shad CN app. Press enter. Yes, I would like to use the source directory. Yes, I would like to use the new app router that was introduced in Next 13. Now a Next.js project has been set up. Let's go to our project folder Shad CN and let's open it in a new window. Now we have a Next.js project initialized. Let's initialize the Shad CN component library in this new Next.js project. Let's copy this. Answer all of these questions according to your needs. Now our Next.js project is ready to use the Shadsian components. Let's go to the button component and actually add the button component. Once we've added the button component, you will find it in your components. Once you've added the button component, you will find it in the components folder in the UI folder, this button component. The code will be written for the button component. Let's start the development server to actually see how this button component looks. Let's remove all the boilerplate code that Next.js gives us. Now let's add the button component. This button component, as you can see, will be imported from at components slash UI slash button. This at always points to the source directory. Let's add the button component that ShadCN has provided us with. As you can see, the button component has been added and we have access to it right here. This is a beautiful component that has been designed by ShadCN. But how does this component actually work and how does it actually help us write better React code? Let's go to the button component itself. Now, I know this is a lot to look at, but we are going to go through each and every part of this entire file. I know this looks like a lot of code to go through, but we are going to go through each and every component of this file. We're going to go through the button component first, then we will move on to the as child logic right here. Then we will check out the button variants, the styling of the buttons and how it improves our developer experience. Then we will move on to the react forwarded ref. In the end, you will understand completely how a ShadCN component works. So let us begin with the main button component that we will be using in our actual page right here. This button and this button are exactly the same thing. Let's put them side by side. Let's put it over here and let's take it over here. This is the button that we have created using the Shad CN CLI, uh, CLI tool. And this is where we are actually using the button. These are all the props that the button component can take right now. The class name, the variant, the size, and the as child. If you go over here and check using the TypeScript intelligence, IntelliSense embedded in the VS code itself, you will see a lot of things. And you will also see that as child is one of them. Variant is also one of them. Size is also one of them. And it takes a lot of other props, which we will get into later. So first let's go to the as child prop. What is it? How does it work? Let's go to our Chrome tab and see the HTML that is being sent to the browser. Right here, let's use the pointer tool and go to the button. All right, so the button has an A tag inside of it. That's cool. But what if I didn't want a button here? What if instead of a button, I wanted all these classes to go to the A tag? Every prop that has been passed to the button, I wanted to go to the A tag too. How would I do that? Well, that is exactly where the as child component comes in. It takes in all the classes and merges it with the classes of the A tag. It takes all the props of the button component and merges it with all the props of the A tag. So if I use the as child prop right here, you will see that the button component completely disappears and all of its classes have been transferred to the A tag. How beautiful is that? That is an amazing abstraction. But how does it happen? How does it do it? This is the line that this is the line that takes care of it all. If you look over here, right now the as child prop is true. So comp is set to the slot in element. 
The slot element is a mysterious element that we will get into later. But what we do know right now is that if as child is false, this comp will be set to a button tag and that button tag will be returned from this main component. Since a button tag is returned from the main component and we have given the A tag as a child of the comp component, we will get button component right here. And as a child of that button component, we will have the A tag. But if we give the as child prop, then this comp will be set to the mysterious slot component. And we just return the child. We just return this, but with the same props and the same classes as the button component. What is this slot component? This comes from right here. What this does is that it takes the child of your button component right here. In this case, for example, it takes the child, it merges all the classes of the button component with this child, it merges all the props of this component with this child, it creates a clone of that component and returns that clone as itself. So the button over here is going to return an A tag with the same class names and the same props as the button component itself. That was a lot to take. I know, watch this video a lot of times, maybe this part, research about the slot component and how it works. Try to understand it again and again. I'm sure that you will understand it. The basic gist is that the button, the slot component takes the, its child, merges all its props and its class names with this child and returns the child itself instead of itself. So this component right here, if the as child prop is not true, if it's false, this will be a button component. And if it is true, if the as child prop is true, this will take its first child, in this case, an A tag, and this will become an A tag with all the same class names and the references. Let's move on to the button variants. Over here, this is a lot to take in right here, but let's go step by step. We know that the class name is supposed to be a string. It's supposed to be a set of tailwind classes that will describe the style of the component right here. So we know that CN right here, it's returning a string. Let's traverse this function one by one. Let's begin with the input that is being given to the CN function. This right here. This button variance looks like a function that takes in inputs as an object of a variant, a size and class name. And this variant size and class name comes from the prop of the button component. So right here, this variant, this size and this class name comes from right here. It comes from this class name, it comes from this variant and it comes from that size. This is passed on to the button variants function that describes the style of the entire component. Let's check out what the button variants function is. The button variants function, we get it from the CVA function from the class variance authority. If you want to understand the class variance authority better, I have a video on it, how to make the perfect and reusable React components. If you check out my channel and while you're at it, subscribe to it and like this video. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm a lot. This class variance authority component, the CVA component, it returns a function that we can use. This function is tailor made to use conditional classes. If we give this button variant function a variant of destructive, then the first argument of the CVA function is the default classes that this function will return. The button variance function, I mean. The button variance will return these function, these classes by default. In addition to that, when you have not specified any variant uh, or size, it will default to this right here. So this right here will be merged with this. Then it will go on to check size. If you have not given it a size, the default classes will be merged with this right here. So it's not easy to understand it only with theory. I have to show it to you and actually show you how this works. Let's give it a variant. Let's give it a variant and let's see what variant it takes. It takes a default destructive ghost link outline and secondary. Now you might notice that these are the same fields 
that we have defined over here. So that means that over here, once we define a field for ourselves, for example, we take destructive. If we have defined destructive right here, now this button variants will receive the destructive variant right here, over here, from here and from here, as we talked about before. It will receive the destructive variant right here. It will go over here, right here. Then it will go to the button variants as an input. When it when the button variants receives it as a, an input, the button variant will return these default classes with these default classes right here. So this entire thing will be merged with the default classes. It will check that size has not been specified in our component. So it will return the default field right here. These classes will then be merged with these classes again. And then it will be returned as a string over here in the class name, which will be used by Tailwind to customize the look of this component. Let's save the destructive and see that it has changed to a destructive variant. Similarly, if you haven't yet understood it, let's add a size prop. See what size we can give it. We can give it an icon size. And now it has become small. Let's give it an LG. Right, the button is now very big. So what is happening right here is that button receives the variant of destructive as a prop and size LG as a prop and as child as a prop. We go back to our button component. We see that this class name is nothing right now. This variant is destructive. The size is LG and as child is true, which is false by default. But this time it is true as child. This can also be written as as child is true. Now, since as child is true, the comp will be the slot component, which means that instead of a button, the first child of the button component will be returned. Then we go on to the button variants where variant is destructive, size is LG and class name is null right now. Since variant is destructive and size is LG, we can go back to the button variants function. This default class will be merged with this destructive class since we have specified destructive. Then when it moves on to the size, this default class will be again merged with the LG classes right here. And that will be returned as a string to the button component itself. This string goes to the CN function, which is a cleaning up function. As you, as you know, I've told you, I have a video on this, how to make the perfect and reusable components in React with using Tailwind. You can check out that video to understand how all of this works. And then this will return the final string that will be used by Tailwind to give styling to this component. Make sense? I hope it does. Next, let's move on to the button props. What are these button props? You might be wondering. Before we actually get into the button props, let's see where it is being used so we can get better context for it. The button props is being used in react.forwardref. You might have this doubt from the beginning of this video. Why are we giving this component, fu this functional component as an input to this react.forwardref? We never do that. We always just use this function directly. Why are we giving it as an input to the react.forwardref, right? That is a great video on Josh Tried Coding's channel about why this is necessary. In short, if you don't want to go to this channel and check out his video, which I recommend you do, you cannot forward the refs, as in the use the ref that you get from the use ref uh, hook in React, which gives you access to the DOM node that is being rendered on your browser. You cannot pass it to the child using props. You cannot pass it using the React props. So you must find another way to, to pass the ref to a child. This is the way you must use to pass the ref of a, from a parent component so uh, to a child component so you can control this ref from the parent component, especially when you're using someone else's component library. Now, this forward ref, when you are passing the functional component in this forward ref function, you can also get the ref as the second argument of your functional component and then pass it to the child component and it will all work out. This forward ref takes two generic types one of them being button props. The first one 
is the type of the ref that you are passing as in the first component, the first child of your parent component. And the second one is the props that this first component takes. As you can see, since we have declared this right here, we can now get all the list of the things that this component takes. This comes from the button props itself because we have told this component, we've told re forward ref that, hey, the function that I'm going to pass to you takes these particular props. That the JSX component that I will be returning from this functional component takes all of these props as the button props. The button props comes from React's official types and the variant props types that we get from the class variance authority so we can get access to this right here. Destructive ghost link that we have put right here. Since we also need access to these uh, values in the component itself, we need to extend the button props from the actual types of the official React button element and the variant types. So we can get access to the destructive and the LGs and everything else. This button prop we can pass into the React forward ref generics to tell it that the returned JSX from this function will have these props and the ref that we are for forwarding is of this type. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know about how this sad CN components work. We've also used it in the file. I can give you a little more idea, more of an idea on how to use it. Let's save everything. Let's go over here. Let's give it a different size. Let's de delete this. Let's give it a size of SM right here. Instead, now let's try to customize this button. Maybe I want a different destructive variant. I want to maintain the background color, but I also want to change the color of the text. Let's change the color to maybe light red. And as you can see, it has been changed to light red without changing the destructive tendencies of the component. If you see that this will not be rendered as a button component, but this whole component is actually an A tag. It's an A tag with the props of the button component. And if I add a new prop, which TypeScript will probably not like, I don't think so. Now let's add name. Name customizable. This name from the button component will be passed on to the A tag right here. How beautiful is that? And that's the beauty of the Shad CN components. Thanks for watching this video. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Subscribe to this channel, like this video if you liked it, and um, bye.